Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator. Today, we're covering how objects can streamline your code with inheritance. Now, um, we've all written spaghetti code where later we go back and look at it and it's just a hairy mess, right? In this video, if you stick around till the end, we're gonna show you how using objects and inheritance in specific can avoid that whole thing from happening. Right, and actually the, the way how we started with this topic is that we're working on a specific uh, code uh, for sending some emails. Yeah, what so happens I, is that uh, the, the code that I was making, I'm just making kind of like a function for now. But as soon as we started talking about, oh, what if the person wants to send with, e uh, with Gmail? What if they want to send with Outlook? Then I was just this, uh, telling you how I would go about it. And that's what we're going to be showing. Yeah, initially, so I have some code that I use through Outlook and I pull in my list and it imports it into Excel. And then I select things and I send and it's sending it actually through Outlook, but it's actually using Mailgun for right. my, because Outlook has that capability with Mailgun. And I was telling Isaiah, you know, it seems silly for me to tie this directly to Mailgun. So right. we should have it to use probably like the CDO object or something so we can connect to any sort of mail server. But then I was like, well, you know what? Some people actually would prefer to go through Outlook. Um, and then right. I'm like, you know what, though? If we do this, we can use Thunder... Bird? Bird Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and have it for Mailgun or other APIs where, you know, let's say even Mailgun. It doesn't Mailgun. matter what the API is, right? So uh, what I was going to do is that I was going to show you something very simple. Uh, so the thing course, is, if we hard-coded those things in there, right. trying to do if-else statements, holy cow, right? No, that it's going to be very annoying. It's going to be very com Or, uh, and that's the other problem, would be like having a function that takes parameters about the type of thing that you need. And then inside the function, you will have a lot of switch statements and other types of things that would be a little bit more annoying to deal with. But let me go ahead and share my screen real quick and show you what, I, what we're referring to with that. So we have a basic GUI that is gonna import some, some information. And one of the buttons here is a send button, right? So during that send button, we're gonna go ahead and get information from a list view that we're having. And of course, we have our email subject, email body, and stuff like that that I'm going to get info from. And for each person in that list, depending on what the list is all about, we're going to be sending an email to them. So for now, just for what we're doing is an internal tool. We're just using a send mail object, and it's just doing this. But as soon as we're thinking about, OK, how about if we actually create something that other people might use, then we started uh, talking about, OK, hold on. Um, some people might use Outlook, but some people might not use Outlook. How are we going to about, go about that? The, the first thing that came into mind was, okay, there's a bunch of things that are very similar or are the same in different sending APIs. Like, for example, um, the to and from and, uh, you know, the subject, the HTML is the same in almost all of them, right? Every single API that you use, whether it's Outlook or Gmail or Thunderbird, it doesn't matter. You will need to specify a from. You will need to specify recipients. You will need to specify a subject and a body. So it's the same all the time. So what I decided was, uh, what I told you, oh, I would go about with an object with that instead of a function. So probably I will have a function here that just sends the information here. And inside the um, function, I would choose with a switch statement probably something that is an option, switch, option. And that means what the um, case is, and it's gonna be case Gmail, for example, and case, uh, for example, uh, um, Outlook. And in the end, after I decide which object I'm gonna use, so that's gonna be my mail object, it's gonna be new, Gmail, for example, near mail equals near Outlook, for example. I would do something like that, something of the sort. And after I decide which object I'm going to use, then I can just say mail send because everything else is going to be. And this is the interesting part about it. So let me do this. This part here is not going to work. So I'm going to set my from, my to, my, and mail send. The interesting part about this is that now I have full control as to what the send function is going to do. Because for Gmail, the send function is gonna do something else. And let me show you the code for that. I would have a class, a basic class, that have my to, my from, my subject and body, right? 
and I could perform very interesting stuff with them. And a basic send function that would have a default function there. But now the class Outlook extends the mail and changes how I'm going to send through Outlook, right? And the Gmail function, for example, I wanted to send with PowerShell instead, not the CDO message, right? So the Gmail function, I want to, I want to send the messages via PowerShell, but the Outlook function, I want to use the CDO message and configure it, for example. So basically now, when I, whenever I go ahead and load my Gmail object, whenever I send here, it is going to actually use PowerShell to send the emails, for example. So now I have full control as to how my, um, my objects behave um, in whenever, you know, in, in, in any type of situation. I do not have to be coding like if else statement down here on my loop. And that's basically what I'm actually saving my time with. I'm saving the coding on if else statements on my loop. And later on, whenever I want to fix the code, it's going to be a little bit more easy for me. It is going to be easier for me to figure out what I'm actually doing. Yeah, right. here's a couple things. One is everything related to Gmail or related to Outlook, it's going to be grouped together, right? Right, right. right. When you go right. to that Thunderbird or whatever other... Whatever, then, then it's going to be just for that, right? Now, yeah. now here, my send function might, instead of using a switch statement, as, as I was saying, my mail function here, here, I could actually have a type here that is going to be Gmail by default or something. Mail.type is going to be Gmail. And actually, just by defining my object, I could say what type it is. So as soon as I switch my type, I would switch which, which function is going to be used for, right? So I could just say mail type equals Gmail, for example. And now my, my send function is going to be very basic, but my, um, my, my mail here, so mail equals new mail. And I could specify the type right there if I want to. I could say it's going to be the type Gmail. And as soon as I created my object, now it knows what to do because I'm going to tell it that whenever you create a new object with the type, then return um, either Outlook or return mail, depending on the type of um, object that you're doing. So as soon as I create the object, I decide what subclass I'm going to be using. You see what I mean? And it returns right away the object that I need. And as soon as I use the send function, it's going to be using the function specifically for the type that I just selected, for example. You know, so it gives me this control. It is granular control of what I'm going to do. And by the time that I, so my code looks very clean. I'm just calling a function. My function is going to be deciding what it is. And this might be based on some settings that I have on an ini file or something, right? So, or something that you can select on the GUI. And that's going to be my default. Uh, and when it loads it, now I have my object performing the actions. Whenever I want to fix those, I go to my file and I fix the one that I need. Oh, I, I, the one that I'm having issues with is with Outlook. Then I go to Outlook, uh, fix that function or modify it or use whatever other method I want. And Gmail might be different. Or, of course, they all might use the same function because the send, I'm going to send it with the CDO. But the headers are different because for Gmail, the headers are different than the headers from Outlook. That's where this type of thing comes into right. place, right? That, that, that all behave similarly in some things, like the to, the from, the subject, but they have differences. That's where I go ahead and use the differences yeah. in a different little class. Yeah, for instance, in Mailgun, you can turn on tracking, you know, and right. track if they open or not, and tags, so we can have right. that recording, um, things that you don't have necessarily in the other tools. And so, Exactly. Yeah. And then I would have for Mailgun, for my class Mailgun, um, extends mail. Then I would have some properties that I would call tags. That's my property. And now whenever you set the tags, 
whenever you set them, then I would loop through the values because probably you have a comma separated tags. Then I would loop through them and convert it into headers that the mail gun thing can understand. So again, I, now I have full control of how the mail gun object is going to perform actions for the tags, which maybe Gmail doesn't have that. Maybe Gmail doesn't have that thing. So that's where um, later on, whenever I need to actually kind of like modify my code, then it is a little bit easier to just concentrate on whatever is whatever is just for mail gun. Everything else is going to behave the same because it is it is extending from the same place. My mail object, for example, you know. So this is uh, something a, a very practical example as where I would go ahead and use an object and use inheritance and how it actually helps me having everything kind of like organized in a different well, place. And that's what I was going to mention was we mentioned this is a principle is inheritance. There's nothing in there. Did you see it said inheritance, right? But that no, no. by extending your classes, right? right. You're, you're using, you're utilizing the benefits of inheritance. Right. Uh, it's just not to openly actually stated in the code. But if, you, if you're no. not familiar with any of this stuff, the URL here over my head, that's our objects course, which starts you off with just working with functions and levels you up and starts to use object-oriented programming. And inheritance is one of those really cool things you have access to. So right. um, check it out if you're interested. Cheers.